Good morning, everybody. Happy day 26 of the challenge. Of course, it is Saturday, November the 26th. I am feeling much better today than I was yesterday. I absolutely had a food hangover yesterday, um, but I got a lot of work done. I got some stuff recorded, and I also got a new phone yesterday. Yay! I have a phone that works now. So um, I uh, hopefully will not be getting kicked off signal anytime soon, and hopefully will not be dropping text messages messages and phone calls. I do not have my WhatsApp um, WhatsApp app installed yet because I'm still working out my Apple ID that also got compromised. So once I get the Apple ID of a running again, I will have WhatsApp 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 on my phone. But I am I still have signal. So if you're overseas and you need to contact me, signal is the best option at this point. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys are all feeling better. I know a lot of people said they were a little food hungover yesterday too and so welcome to day 26 of the challenge it is self-study saturday so if you did rest yesterday you obviously did work out this morning because you switched the days which was what i told you guys i do i always rest the day after a holiday just because of my disposition and the way that my body takes in food i know that my body because I'm Vata Pitta, it's going to be a little bit harder for my system to digest than someone who's maybe more kapha based. Uh, they have an easier time digesting than Vata Pittas tend to have digesting. It's so funny. I think uh, I hear a lot with people who are kapha. Sorry, I, I'm trying to pull the day up while I talk, while I talk to you guys. Um, but I hear people who are kapha always say that they wish they were Vata. But I'm going to tell you something, guys, something I don't think I've said on air yet. Vata Pitta, the disposition that I am, yes, I might be on the thinner side. Yes, I don't struggle with my weight, but Vata Pitta is the least healthy of all of the dispositions. People who are Pitta Kappa or Kappa Pitta are typically the healthiest of all of the dispositions, even though you might struggle with your weight more because you are typically more big boned, your body is sturdier than mine. And so, and something like a food hangover shows you that really clearly because the kappas probably did not struggle as much with food hangovers as the vatas did so um so there you go all right so once again today is saturday november 26 if you did yet work out yesterday then today is your rest day and of course saturday is self-study saturday so you're going to be looking at the yamas and niyamas of the yoga sutra so this is like yoga 101 so even though the yamas and niyamas come in the second sutra they're kind of the baseline for all of the yoga practices they're your moral and ethical uh, barometers. Like, for example, the first yama is ahimsa. And ahimsa is a Sanskrit word that means non-violence. And so something I said to the yoga group and that I say to a lot of my students, when we are out in the world trying to better ourselves or trying to be spiritually aligned with the universe, the first person we have to heal, obviously, is us. And so with Ahemza, as I say all the time, I speak to myself in ways that I would never speak to another person. So that's something I want each of you guys to focus on is the self-deprecating thoughts, the self-deprecating conversations that you have with yourself. Are you speaking to yourself in ways that are hurtful and harmful? Do you beat yourself up? You know, when you feel that frustration come up in your practice or you feel frustrated because the exercise is hard, are you mean to yourself about it? Do you beat yourself up about that or do you just laugh and say, okay, interesting, I'm struggling here, so let me keep working on it. I really want you guys to focus a lot on that first, that ahimsa of how you speak to yourself. You know, there's also um, santosha, which means inner contentment. And I've said that before, like, you know, us on this journey, especially with this great awakening, we're waiting for the day when everything flips and when we're in fourth density positive. But something that the spiritual practice teaches you is can you be content with life as it is now? And that's what Santosha means. It's contentment. Are you okay with being in this predicament for the next five years if need be? Can you find peace? in the turmoil. Because I think once we find peace in the turmoil, once we start chasing after tomorrow, because tomorrow never comes, then I think we'll get closer to actually making that flip. Because it's all about the now, right? It's all about the past is already done and tomorrow never comes, right? So it's all about right now. Now, as I said yesterday, today you have a really big this is a huge part of spiritual practice. And that's observing the fact that your thoughts and your opinions are not you. 
So you're going to do an out exercise today where you're going to go outside, weather permitting, and see if you can sit in nature for at least 15 minutes. While outside, see if you can observe the stimulation around you. If you're in a city, can you truly listen to all the sounds of the cars, the conversation of those passing by, the sounds of the wind moving in between the buildings? If you're in a small town or out in the middle of nowhere, what sounds can you hear? Do you hear the trees moving in the wind? If it's cold, where is it cold where you are? Can you breathe into the cold? How does the cold feel on your skin? Same if it's hot. Can you observe the sensation of your nervous system adapting to the environment? Don't judge it as too cold or too hot. Just observe. How does it feel not to judge the sensation? That's the ahemza. That's the nonviolence without judging the sensation. Do you relax into what is when there is no held judgment as to know how you personally feel about it? After the experience is over, journal about it. What did you learn from leaning into the into this instead of holding an opinion? Which let me read that again. After the experience is over, journal about it. What did you learn from leaning into what is instead of holding an opinion, what it should be, depending on your likes and dislikes? Right? And that kind of also gets into the concept of expectation and reality. Uh, sometimes we our expectations are really different from the reality of the situation. And because we hold to the expectation of the situation, the reality is not experienced and it's truth. Okay? Um, so I say here, this is a huge practice in spiritual awakening. Your opinions are not you. They are just reactions to experiences you've had. Can you fully engage your senses to experience what is being presented to you without you holding judgment or opinions? Next step is to apply this theory to your daily workouts. Can you feel the burning sensation of the muscles working, the breath, and the heart quickening sweat pouring without judging it? When the emotions such as anger, joy, frustration, etc. come up in your workout, can you fully engage in the emotion, experiencing, learning from it without judging it? Once again, back to your food journaling. And as we said uh, yesterday, this is your journal for today. But let's go ahead and look at Sunday, November 27th, which is your last Sunday fun day of this challenge. So here I say that you have three days left. You got this. So make your bed up. Your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. No snacking after 7 p.m. This allows you your digestive system at least 12 hours of rest between dinner and breakfast. Your choice, you can either do sweating to the oldies today or you can turn the music on and dance around freestyle for 60 minutes or you can go outside either by yourself with your pet or with your family and walk for 60 minutes. Do your five-minute cold shower and then you're going to do sound bowl healing or the on meditation. Once again, you've got your food journal and journaling for tomorrow, for Sunday, for the last Sunday fun day. As you come to the final days of the challenge, what are your emotions around it? What surprises you the most about yourself? What is the biggest lesson you have learned? Friction is the most important tool of shadow work. You need friction to prompt change. I often use the example of striking a match. The match itself has everything in it to create light, but it cannot create the light unless it is struck on the matchbook. The intense striking is the friction needed for the match to ignite the light it already has in it. How do you feel about friction now? Over these last 27 days, what did you learn from the anger, sweat, tears? How did the uncomfortable exercise teach you about yourself? How did the workout help you create the need needed friction so you can ignite the light that was dormant in you? How has this theory changed your perception of exercise? How is this perception on e perspective on exercise different from your thoughts on it before the challenge? Have you been able to let go of pressure of competition, especially since no one is watching you? What is the thing you're most proud of from your work in this challenge? And then the same closing out of the evening. And then, of course, we'll look at Monday tomorrow. Um, on Sunday, we'll look at we'll go ahead and look into Monday. So, yes, we are going to be doing a 60-day challenge. Um, I told the Signal Group this morning I am debating between whether starting it on January 1st or I'm looking at, so March 23rd, 2023 is a big day astrologically. And so I was kind of in the shower this morning. I was like, maybe I should set the 60 day challenge up to end on March 23rd, 2023. So I need to look and back up 60 days before March 23rd. So for, on all likelihood that the 60 day channel challenge might not start on January 1. It might start a couple of weeks into January. And I want to get your opinion on this. I did talk to Catherine Edwards this morning and I'm going to reach out to Mornay and Shante. Shante said some, this is a 60 day challenge to see if they want to help me organize this differently or if they want to contribute more like a week of the challenge, all that kind of stuff. So we have different perspectives coming into the shadow work challenge. 
I'm still working that out. I've already started working on the 60 day challenge. So I kind of know where we're going. There's definitely going to be more of a variety of workouts, mainly because those of you doing the 30 day challenge, your fitness level is going to be at a higher point starting the 60 day channel the challenge than it was starting this challenge. And so I'm going to have different tiers for people who are used to now doing this versus people who are brand new. So you can pick which tier you want to follow for the new challenge coming up. And of course, with the 60 day challenge, there will also be prizes as well. Just like we're going to do next week, we're going to be drawing the prizes next week for the 30 day challenge. So let me know your thoughts and your opinions about that down in the comment section below as always. And um, people have asked me like, what are we going to do in December for the challenge? Well, the last day of this challenge, I actually ask you to go ahead and map out your December. And so what I want to tell you, what I've been telling people is you can use this 30 day challenge that you've just done is a template for December. Now, December is going to be a hectic month for a lot of people. And so my biggest advice from my opinion is for December, the main thing you wanna look at doing is keeping up with the six days a week of exercise for sure. Don't slack on that. The exercise is the most important part of this whole experience because it's your body and your body is the Shakti of the soul. You cannot have spirituality without exercise. It just, it doesn't exist. And for people who are limited with their body, if you're in a wheelchair or if you have a um, a condition that's making it very difficult to exercise, you can still exercise in your mind. So you can still sit back and close your eyes and walk yourself through mentally exercising. And that's going to, in return, transfer into the, the mind field of the body. So it's possible for everyone to do this, okay? As Patabi Joy says, all men can practice yoga. It's talking about yoga, yoga specifically, but all exercise. Everyone can do this. A fat man, a skinny man, a young man, an old man, a healthy man, a sick man. The only man who can't do this is a lazy man. Okay. So, and we have so many people who are in like their 80s doing this right now. So it is absolutely possible. Just keep your body moving. Keep your body sweating. So most important thing, exercise. Second, most important thing, journaling. So keep those two things up for sure during December. Um, try to continue to go to bed early so that you're using the dosha system to help you heal you're not, not making it harder on your body by staying up later you're allowing the energy of the earth to help you heal um and then if you want to add if you have some time and you want to add some more shadow work deeper shadow work into your journaling you can go back and repeat any of like the kuan yin stuff or write about more betrayal stuff whatever you want to repeat from the 30-day channel challenge you can put into december as well um you could even do the whole sophia code over again during december if you wanted to um that's on my channel i can put a link to it if that's something you're interested in you can do the whole sophia code again if you want to um you can look at other books out there that are in in this field of shadow work that i have not suggested you can do that during december there's so many options out there and you guys got this you know what to do you have 30 days now to learn and you you've all learned so much so i totally this is going to be easy for you guys you can absolutely figure it out i have total faith in you uh, i do say in the last day to find something that you've wanted to do like something that's challenging you know maybe you want to you want to train for a 5k or a 10k or maybe you want to go and get reiki attuned or maybe you want to join a yoga shala maybe there's something that you're a little bit hesitant, hesitant to do, but you've been wanting to do it. Um, we always did the challenger round table. Kathy was saying that she's always wanted to dance. So I challenged her to find a dance class for adults and go do it. You know, find something that you've always wanted to do, but you've always been a little bit afraid to do for whatever reason and just sign up for it and go do it, right? Just go do it. And let that be part of your December as well. Um, I, I think you're going to find that you're going to have so many breakthroughs and so many self-realizations once you're done with the 30 days and you're making your own 30 days. Um, so, yeah, and if you have any questions, you can always ask me. I'm, I'm available to help. I want to help. I, you know, I, I feel like I'm not a huge fan of the Bible because we know the Bible has been manip manipulated a lot. But there is a verse in the Bible that there are a few verses that I really like. And one is to whom much is given, much is expected. And I've been so blessed in my life. I've had so many amazing opportunities with incredible teachers. Really, I have had incredible, the, the top teachers in the world have been my teachers. And so it is my honor to be able to pass this forward and to and to give you, help you guys uh, find your footing in, in this whole experience. And I always say, don't, don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10. Yes, I've done this for 16 years. All that means is that I can now help you. That's all that means. 
And then one day, 10 years from now, you can do the same thing I'm doing. You can reach your hand out to someone else and say, hey, let me help you with this. Um, and uh, the, the Enroll Tablet, Tablet 3, we're going to be looking at the first part of the, the third tablet on Monday. And Thoth talks about that, that it's important to have a teacher. It's important to have a guide. It's important to have someone to mentor you, um, that if you don't have that, you can go astray. And so I am totally willing to do everything I can to help you guys um, get on this path. And uh, that's it's my it's my pleasure and my honor to be able to help you guys with this and, um, and, and just really help us all. Where we go one, we go all, right? And we're all just walking each other home. And so we're in this together. And so everything you're learning now from me, one day you can turn around and help somebody else with it too. That's the only thing I ask is that you just pay it forward and keep this information going. Yeah? Because this is the teachings of Yahshua, the shadow work. This is the teaching of the Emerald Talent uh, Tablets. That's why Thoth says it takes courage to do this, to look, in, to, to look the darkness in the eyes and challenge it. It takes courage, but that's your key to liberation, is that courage. That's, again, the story of Hanuman and the Ravayana. And so um, and so I'm proud of each and every one of you. But with that being said, so yes, all the challenges, the 30-day challenge, the 60-day challenge, all that is free of charge, okay? So 60-day challenge will be the same as 30 days. You'll just email me. Once I have the, the 60 days set up and the template completely done, I will put a, a notice out there, and you'll just email me, and I'll send it to you just like I did 30 days, okay? totally free all you'll need is your body a journal and some castor oil if you want to do the oil baths i am going to add some optional exercises with weights so i will put that in the intro to the challenge if that's something if that's one of the exercises you want to participate in you can get like two or three pound weights if not all of the exercises with weights can be done without weights too but i'll also give another option of a workout that doesn't have any equipment as well so that will be something added to to the 60 day challenge i mean I work with two pound weights when I work with weights because the lighter the weight, the more mobility you have with the arm and we want the strength to be mobile. So, um, so they're like, I think they're like $7 each, very cheap. So, um, so if that's something that you want to purchase for the next challenge, but anyway, the, the, sh the, the challenges are always going to be free. My next yoga intensive, I believe is going to be starting on January 8th with Emmy and me for we're doing the yoga and the Reiki together. Um, I will be, probably updating that the website this week. I know I was going to do it last week, but things got crazy with Thanksgiving. So I haven't been able to do that yet. But the work the website uh, should be updated very soon with the new dates. If anybody wants to go ahead and book a spot for the next yoga intensive, or again, if you want to book it for a Christmas present, um, you will just let me know and we'll figure out a way to create like a gift card or something that you can I can email to you and you can wrap for your your significant other or your friend or whoever you're you're buying the seat for. Um, and I had somebody ask and I, I had kind of been thinking about this and I want to get your perspective. So normally I I I am I will teach private lessons. I normally charge about 200 250 an hour for a private lesson here in the city depending on if you're coming to the shala it's a little cheaper but if i go to your house i i tack on gas onto that price um and some people asked if i would be interested in doing like private lessons over zoom and yes kind of i would be interested it's hard for me to teach over zoom because i want to be able to adjust you and i'm not able to do that through obviously through a zoom screen but if that is something people are truly interested in and they want to start taking private lessons from me or have a group of friends that want to take group private lessons if that's something you're interested in let me know i can put up like a package like 10 i, I obviously would not charge so if, if you're coming to ashtanga yoga atlanta or sacred garden yoga and taking an in real life private lesson with me it's about it would be about two hundred dollars an hour but if you want to do it on zoom i would probably cut that in half and only do like a hundred an hour because i can't adjust you and so i'm thinking that if that's something you guys are interested in, what i can do is i could i could create um a page where you can book um, and you can either do one lesson or I could do a package of like five lessons for 500 or 10 lessons for a thousand. And you could even do it if you have like friends that you want to share the lesson with. You know, you guys can split the costs between you. Um, that happens a lot. That even happens at private lessons at studios where, you know, uh, friends will book a private lesson together. And so if that's something you're interested in, just let me know in the comment section below and I will consider putting that up on a website for you to book that with me, no problem. If you do live close to Atlanta, you can book a private lesson with me at AYA or at Sacred Garden if you want to. Um, just let me know and I can meet you at the studio and, and give you a private lesson there or at um, either at 
AYA or at uh, Sacred Garden. So, so yeah, just let me know. And um, it's it's a, it's a it's a it's a brave new world out there that <laughs> trying to figure out how to do this online. And I, I do, I am I'm definitely a person that um, obviously I, I'm not a shy person, and I, I do enjoy teaching people in person, um, just so I can really work with you and work with your energy. But again times have changed. And so if that's something you're interested in, I know people have asked me about that. Just let me know and we'll, and we'll go from there. So, all right, you guys. Um, yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.